When we talk about sustainable aviation, the first common misconception is that flying can be decarbonized by making aircraft technology more efficient every year. For example, take a look at this BBC article which states, giant jet engines aim to make our flying greener. Now, efficiency improvements are enabled by larger engines, more aerodynamic wings, the use of lighter materials such as carbon fiber, and the use of materials that can withstand higher temperature and higher pressures within the engines. And it is true that an aircraft built this year is about 10% more efficient than another aircraft built about 10 years ago. Have a look at this chart. This means that for a passenger flying an identical flight, but with the latest technology, they will have burnt about 10% less fuel and therefore produced about 10% less emissions. So the technology has resulted in emissions reduction per passenger mile flown. However, as less fuel is being burnt, these efficiency improvements have also reduced the cost of flying. Meanwhile, the last few decades have seen a massive increase in global wealth. The Australian airline Qantas said that in 1950, an Australian earning the average wage would have taken 1.5 years before they could afford to fly a return flight from Sydney to London, whereas now it would take less than a week and they could afford to do so. This combination of lower cost flying, which was enabled by the efficiency improvements, combined with a global population that can afford to and do choose to fly, has meant the growth of air travel has far outstripped the efficiency savings that were made. For example, there were roughly twice as many flights in the year 2015 as there were in the year 2000. We should project that this trend will continue if the cost of flying continues to decrease. The industry projects that there will be four times as many flights by 2030 and eight times as many flights by 2050. Our planet's atmosphere won't notice that emissions per passenger have decreased. All it will see is total emissions that we put in every year, and that's increasing, not decreasing. Effective emissions pricing is therefore required to ensure that these efficiency improvements do actually lead to reductions in emissions rather than increases. The key takeaway here is that in an unregulated market, efficiency improvements will be used to grow the market and increase emissions, not reduce them. So going forwards, it needs to be regulated to ensure that the efficiency improvements exceed market growth and emissions reduce.